Good afternoon. And let me start by saying you can't handle the truth. <laughs> messing with you, but I'll get to that in a moment. I'm going to talk today about truth and lies and how we use them against ourselves and against other people. It may not be what you think. Before I jump into the topic, though, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, why I do these talks, and maybe you want to tag along. My name is Barry Selby. I'm an inspirational speaker, spiritual teacher, love and relationships expert, and also the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. I highly recommend it because I wrote it. Um, I'm a love and relationship coach, helping women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And that's what inspired these talks almost three years ago called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And today we're episode number 861. Yes, 861. And the topic today is, um, do you speak truth or do you speak lies? And it may be more deceptive than you think. Because you might say, oh, I'm always honest, I'm always telling the truth. I'm going to ask you if that's true or not. Before jumping to that, though, just first of all, I want to say um, happy, I guess happy, um, happy World um, Mental Health Day. I don't know if that's a thing you say happy about, but I'm saying it anyway, because this actually may correspond to that. Because if you have some challenges with speaking the truth or with having challenges around lying, this may help you because this might be a little balancing act you can learn. So, hi, Amanda, and I see you in my broadcast. This is part three, as you may have realized. Um, and just you know, in case you didn't know already on my wall, I posted a talk this morning that my friend uh, Liana invited me to be on her broadcast, and we did a dual broadcast this morning, which is on my wall from this morning. On my wall. On my Facebook wall this morning. You can watch it there. It's a replay. Same shirt, so you can identify me. <laughs> we dive in deep on this kind of topic, and I want to do some extra thoughts that I had from there and to this. And Amanda also saw my other broadcast I did in a group that she and I belong to. So that was not public though, so you can't see that one. So I'm gonna reiterate some points and make some clarification. So here's the thing. Honesty is a very rare commodity nowadays. And it's especially rare in relationships of all places. Now one would think that being in a relationship you'd be much more honest, open, vulnerable, connected. That's the wish. But so many of us, and I'm including myself because I've done it myself, have either told lies blatantly or subtly or avoided the truth to spare somebody in quotes that also is the same as lying but there's more to it than this I did speak about this earlier in my other broadcast so Amanda forgive me for repeating myself um, how we lie to ourselves by what we tell ourselves we're going to do and we don't do them you know that thing about agreements they say I'm going to do something and we don't actually do it like getting up at 5 a.m. go to the gym and you keep hitting the snooze alarm that's lying to yourself Yes, it's lying to yourself. It ain't telling the truth. Now, saying that you'd like to get up at 5 a.m. and go to the gym and you hit the snooze alarm, that softens the blow, but it's still not the truth. And so a lot of times we don't speak the truth to ourselves. In fact, we make up stuff about life. And to make it worse, we then go ahead and judge ourselves and beat ourselves up because we didn't speak the truth. And that's unfortunate because for many of us, being willing to be authentic and desiring to be authentic requires honesty and requires truth yet we don't live our lives that way in fact we have our life built around a facade house of cards is what I used earlier as a term a facade of falsehoods and if people saying no no I'm honest I'm honest I'm honest let's check some things first when someone hurts your feelings do you tell them now the caveat <laughs> I recommend you tell them politely of course but I'm also recommending that you're willing to tell them the truth because a lot of times maybe it's just me maybe it's just me maybe you never do this when someone says something that triggers my upset I'll go away and won't say anything about it I'm getting better at saying something in the moment but I'm not perfect at it so I would suspect you may be in the same boat as I am where maybe your willingness to be honest is withheld because maybe you've got some rule you're running a lot of maybes I know that maybe on the spare that <laughs> maybe you say maybe 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 that you you're basically um, respecting their feelings. Hi Raji, nice to see you in my broadcast. Um, that you want to spare their feelings, like you'd rather suffer the slings and arrows. Again, maybe it's just me, but you'd rather not be confronted with them, saying what you said didn't work for me. Now this is, that's by the way that's the trick. You don't say you did me wrong or you hurt my feelings. Like no, that's disempowering yourself. That's a victimization, and I'll talk about that maybe later on. I talked about it before, but you say to them. What you said hurt my feelings. So that wasn't appropriate. So, hi. Um, 
Oh, by the way, this is a Facebook Live in case you're wondering. If you're watching on this on YouTube and you're wondering who am I talking to, this is a Facebook Live first one so talking to the people who are watching me there. And I'll give you all the links about where you can find me in replay and live at the end of the broadcast, so stay tuned for that. I have to preliminary, pre, pre authorize, pre say things. All right. So for some of us, it's imperative that we don't create any ripples around us, create any waves. We don't upset anybody. So when you get, when somebody upsets you or triggers you, oftentimes you don't know how to respond to that. And the way I recommend you do it, because I've learned this lesson the hard way and I was trained this in this, is to really get clear that what you're expressing to them is how what they did didn't work for you. Not that they hurt you, because that puts a place where they have the power of you, which is the whole victim thing I talked about before. I might, might go there again. It also puts you in a place of being empowered. Because when you say to them, this doesn't work for me, first of all, you set up a boundary. Now, they may not respect that boundary. They may not, they may not res respond to you or even, even understand what you're saying. But the fact you've said it clears the air for you. And if they do it again, that may be a clue you might want to walk away. Because self respect sometimes requires disassociating yourself from other people. Okay, I'm going to another path. Let me stay back to the truth thing for a moment. So, lying and, lies and truth. As I said, one of the biggest fundamental things we do to ourselves is we make commitments we don't keep. We make agreements we don't keep. Now, you may make agreements with other people you do keep, but I'm talking about the ones we do with ourselves. It's really weird in a way that as human beings, or spiritual beings having a human experience, we will spend our time doing the best we can to keep agreements with other people, but we neglect our own self, our own agreements with ourselves. Yet the thing is, we're the most important in our life, most important person in our lives. We're the person we're going to be, we, we're born with and we die with. It means to be, not to be morbid, but this is reality. We're the person we spend the most time with in our lives as ourselves, like obviously. Yet we don't treat ourselves with the dignity and respect we treat other people. Why is that? Could it be perhaps a feeling of lower lack of self-worth? And that's the thing. I'm glad, I'm glad, you're the, I'm glad these points are landing for you, Rajis. Thank you. Um, the thing is, is that for a lot of us, we're so bought into the external world, partly because we think that's more important, and secondly, because those of us who are conscious and aware <sighs> are worried that if we start putting ourselves first, we're going to be, be feeding our egos. Now, this is a trap. Not that feeding our egos, but it's a trap to believe we're doing that. I've talked about this at a great length before, and with my clients especially, that when you learn to respect yourself and honor who you are, that's not ego-driven, that's heart-driven. That's presence, consciousness, caring, compassion, these sort of things. If your ego is driving everything, yeah, you're going to be in trouble pretty quickly, because that putting yourself first stuff becomes arrogance, and it's upsetting to other people. Now, I don't recommend that at all. But when you learn how to put yourself first as a self-respecting, um, self-caring, that's a good word, self-caring activity, then what you're doing is creating a much more healthy way of presenting yourself to the world. And so the thing, we are, as I said before, like we tend to put other people first before ourselves, that includes our self-care. Now, I'm not talking about health stuff, although this impacts your health, is when you start respecting yourself and caring for yourself, First of all, you'll start saying no to things, back to the agreement piece I said earlier. Because one of the problems with agreements is we, we make too many, and we overcommit, and we get stressed and worn out and, and, and depleted. When we learn to say no cleanly and owning our space, then our health support goes up because we respect ourselves. I talked earlier in broadcast, and I've done this one a few weeks ago, about this agreement keeping. Let me give you some quick tips about agreement keeping. One of which is to say no. When you say no in agreements, you're actually saying yes to yourself. And there's nothing to then be honest about, sorry, nothing to lie about. You're being truthful, saying, I don't want to do it. Because a lot of us, at least I've done this, said yes to things we didn't really want to say yes to, so we've actually been lying. We've not been telling our truth. So it's vital we do that. Your, deli your delivery is shit sometimes? Oh boy. You think you say things your truth more softly, it can be... Oh, it can be a little too direct. Uh, let me get to that in a moment, Raji. Yes, you, you did hit a point. I, 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 um, I understand that one. <laughs> Blatant truth can be painful. So let me get to that in a second. Let me back up to the agreement keeping piece for a moment just to give you these five, I think it's five keys. So one, one is to um, say no. Secondly, well, say no, which is also the same as making fewer agreements. That's one. That's one. Two is write them down. 
Now, we make agreements sometimes verbally with people over the phone or texting, whatever. We don't make a note of it. We don't write it down. We don't put it into a journal. We don't put a post it on the wall, whatever it is. But writing them down is an anchoring system. It's a system. Yeah, it's a system writing things down. It's a methodology when you write things down that helps you remember them. Because sometimes we forget what we were saying. <laughs> and that's not senility. That's just human nature. So that's, that's two. Third one is if your agreements are starting to conflict because you've got too many on your plate because you put them in your calendar and you see, oh, that's going to end at the same time, renegotiate. At least ask to renegotiate. If they won't, that's not your problem anymore. You've said, look, I realize I double booked myself. I need to say no. This is part of that re um, resetting so you can take ownership. Because all this stuff I'm talking about in agreement keeping is tied to being truthful or lying. And when you start keeping better agreements with yourself especially, oh, by the way, <laughs> when you make agreements with anybody else, the first person you make it with is with yourself. This is the dance of, relation, uh, dance of um, agreement keeping. Every agreement you make out there is including you. So that's why part of the agreements. So understanding that when you make your agreements clean and you make them more effectively and you make them more manageably, yeah, that's a word, then you're staying true to yourself and it makes your agreement keeping healthier. See, the part of this is and about being honest is it's an automatic... Um, level, I guess, automatic, well, automatic gauge, that's a better word, a romantic gauge of your self-esteem. Your self-esteem and self-support are based upon, one, your ability to keep agreements, and two, your ability to be honest. If you do those two things well, your self-esteem automatically increases, and so does your self-support, and so does your self-trust. And the funny thing is, is when you start doing that, you're more honest and you keep your agreements, other people start trusting you, who may never have trusted you before, because they can feel it in you, because you own it in yourself. So understanding that your self-trust and self-agreement, self-esteem are tied to your agreement keeping. That's why I'm saying so fundamental. Keeping your agreements, renegotiating, saying no, writing them down, those four things will change your life dramatically, as simplistic as it sounds. So I hope this makes sense to you. So getting back to what you said earlier, let me find the note. Raji, about your, oh, your delivery is shit sometimes. Hmm. Um, so being, like I, like I joked in the title about you can't handle the truth, that's the problem sometimes. We think that we've got to be so blatant with people that they'll shock them awake and they'll understand. Maybe, maybe not. So, um, it's, it's, being, it's gonna be a little too great, is that a thing? Yes, it is a little thing. Because the things you have to understand, that what's happening in here may not be happening out there. <laughs> as simple as it sounds. We get caught up in the thing is we want to deliver and share content with people so they actually know that we're trying to tell them the truth. So, first of all, it's a good thing to preface what you're going to say by saying, there's something I want to say, and it may not come out bluntly, it may come out uncertainty, but I want to let you know ahead of time that it's something I want to say it's important to me, but I want you to know that. Because if you do that alone, it's like preparing them to receive it, so they may not be so reactive to what you said. Now, another part of that is, if your truth is about them, that's when you want to frame it a little bit more um, objectively and ownership-based. I've said this before on other things about about... I do have projections, I think, a while ago. But this thing about when we talk to people, and this is the victim piece I said earlier, it's all tied together. When you are afraid of telling somebody the truth because you're afraid they're going to be upset with you, that's putting yourself in the victim role because you're giving them the power of what you say because their reaction is overriding your choice to say something. So you're going to watch that one. Secondly, by prefacing what you're going to say with letting them know that you have something you want to share that you feel is your truth, your authentic um values that how they receive it is up to them it's not up to you that's not the part where you want to make sure their feelings are theirs not yours so you're telling them they have permission to walk away they have permission to be upset they have permission to receive you then when you say your truth say it from an ownership level like I said earlier if someone upset if you feel triggered by somebody what they did don't say you know you hurt my feelings saying that what you did that I was upset by what you did because then you take ownership of your feelings again removing the victim mindset so that we don't give them the power, and you don't need to give them the power. You get your ownership back. Because we are interesting human beings. I should say human beings are interesting. We spend a lot of our time running around reacting to what happens around us. This is another teaching I did last week, I think. And we fall in this trap thinking that everything out there is affecting us. Like the news, like the media, like the tweets going around, all that sort of stuff. It's tempting, it's so tempting. When we recognize that we don't have to be invested in those things, that we can choose to respond to those things, again, reaction versus response, very different. It can change everything in our lives. 
because we become um, more responsive to what's happening in the world versus reactive, as I just said. I used, just use those words. We don't become numb. This is not the thing, by the way. But what we become, though, is able to facilitate our own process, meaning that when something that said triggers us, we can go, well, hang on a second. That really hit something inside of me that hurt. What is that? Now, you don't need to respond to what happened out there right away, but when you spend the time being with yourself and owning your own um, upset feelings, you can process what's going on. Maybe you felt, maybe it triggered a judgment side of you. Maybe it triggered a vulnerability from when you were a child. Maybe it triggered something else. Deal with that inside yourself. That's nothing to do with anybody else. It's your opportunity. Yes, opportunity. So next time that happens, one, you may not be reactive to it. And secondly, you may be able to respond by saying, interesting, that's not my thing anymore, perhaps. Now, I talked about this, yeah, I did talk about this last week, about spirit, what called spiritual bypass, or actually in, um, it was, Lisa Nichols talks about spiritual saran wrap. We have this tendency when we're doing spiritual work and becoming awakened, and I use that term in quotes because some people pretend to be, but they're not. <laughs> I'm gonna be nice. Um, that <laughs> sorry, I'm just, some people cross my mind. I just, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to go there. Okay, so <laughs> when we are more awake, aware, becoming spiritually conscious, something tempting to be emotionally detached. Um, yes, right. Yes, you're welcome. So preface, prepare them to receive. Say it from an ownership level. Yes, use I statements exactly. I mean, it, it, it is simple stuff, but we forget, especially in the heat of the upset moment. So I'm glad it can help. All right, so get back to what I was saying before, the spiritual bypass. It's tempting sometimes when you think you're spiritual, <laughs> when you think you're spiritual, that you won't be emotional, that emotions are beneath you, that you're beyond that, you're better than that, and all this sort of stuff. I call bullshit on that, to be honest, first of all, because emotions are part of the human makeup. And yes, I do talk about being spiritual beings having human experience, but when you're having a human experience, you do experience things like physical pain, emotional pain, mental upset, all these different things. It's part of the human condition. First of all, don't judge it. It's part of what we process. Secondly, learn how to master it. I was talking with a, um, it was an interview I had last week, I think I talked about this, about emotional mastery. Emotional mastery is not suppression, it's facilitation. Meaning that when you get upset about something, you deal with the upset, you deal with the emotions, you deal with the process, rather than going into a place of going, I'm fine, I'm fine, nothing's going on. Now, coming from England, <laughs> that fine response was a part of our nature because we didn't get emotional in England. It wasn't because we, it wasn't because we weren't emotional, we just stuffed it all down. Now, people out here do that as well, a lot as well, I noticed. But what I'm aware of is that when people get upset, and I'm learning this lesson for myself because this was a relationship killer when I was in my teens and 20s. I talked about that one, talked about that one before. Emotional upsets are not reasons to walk away unless it's perpetual. If someone's always venting and upset, for your own self-support, walk away, definitely. But if someone's in an upset with you in an intimate connection relationship, this is the lesson I to, I'm, still, I'm still learning this one at times. It's okay to be in the process of that emotional upset. We don't walk away, but you don't take it personally. Now, if you're emotionally upset, the intention is to be able to voice and vent it without making the other person responsible for it. To be able to feel and express your emotions authentically and honestly, and we'll come back to the title eventually, is the way for freedom. Now, sometimes you need to do that on your own without anybody else around just to get it out of your system. This is being an authentic, this is basically, this is part of emotional maturity, is to learn how to own respect and honor your own emotional expression. For men and women, by the way, this is not, this is not one gender or the other, it's for both. So to get back to the titles, I can wrap this all up in a nice little bow. There are many ways that we lie to ourselves and other people. And it's sometimes deceptive because we don't realize we're doing it. Now, <laughs> one place I'm I don't want to go there oh yeah I'm just going to say it just because I get it out there, they're out there. <clears throat> I live in Los Angeles so there's a lot of people who are very much about their presentation be it plastic surgery fake present, fake outfit fake um, accoutrements <laughs> the cars they drive the place they live and that sort of thing that's a form of being lying and truthful too. Now, I've got to be careful with this guy. A lot of friends of mine who've had um, cosmetic surgery that did it for their own self-esteem because they've told me this. So I'm not saying this is a wrong thing, but how honest can you be in your presentation? 
there's a lot of times that people present themselves by overly accessorizing part of their personality. Men go to the gym, work out, and get all buffed up and big and strong because they want to appear that way. Maybe they're covering for themselves. Maybe they're not being authentic to their true nature. I was in a boy. This is this is my oh, this is my first breakthrough experience back in '84. I was in a diet with this guy who was like really built, built muscle built, um, dark tan, had a leather jacket on, had a Porsche key hanging from his key from his keychain. I mean, he had all the looks around. And I, at this time, I'd just been, I was three days into my first seminar, so I hadn't got much experience. We sit down together, and when he talked to me about what he was, what ha- he was actually um, about hiding, so not being honest, not being truthful about hiding who we are. He started telling me stuff about himself that matched me exactly. Like, how the hell did we have the same thing? Because we don't look alike. We don't present alike. None of that stuff. But what I realized, I mean, it brought, the whole process put me to tears because it showed me the, in my, his vulnerability, my own vulnerability. But the realization I had at the end of that was that we tend to present ourselves a lot of times to hide who we really are. Again, honesty versus lies. When you can be authentic in your expression and presentation, even if you have done things in your life to make yourself look different, whether it's going to the gym and pounding weights or getting plastic surgery or doing certain things to your body to present differently, even tattoos. Are those really the same things? Can you be authentic with those? Maybe those are part of your authentic expression. See, this is the thing I'm realizing I'm saying, so I've got to flip it the other way around, which is to say, we all have our authentic presentation. Sometimes it's accessorized by what we do to ourselves. Sometimes it's hidden by that. You know for yourself which is true. I think that ends it. Okay. So just wrap it up and get back on the track because I'm realizing that I was going a path. Your invitation, if you wish to, if you, your mission, if you choose to accept it, <laughs> is to look at your own life and look where you are being honest and look where you're lying. And I mean that from a subtle as well as a blatant level. Where is it you're holding back on your truth? Where is it you're, you're keeping agreements? You, sorry, where is it you're making agreements you don't keep, particularly with yourself? And where is it you could be more op- open to? honesty, authenticity, and truth. I do invite your comments and questions below because this is an opening conversation. It's not the end. I'm not giving you the answers to everything. I'll give you some tips, but there are answers still to come. So please put your thoughts and comments in the, in question, in the, uh, in the comments below and I'll respond after I sign off. I will put some links in the comments as usual because there's always invitations. Um, one of which is I mentioned about really supporting your self-support and self-esteem and self-love. I'll put the self-love practice in the, medita- the meditation in, in the comments. It's a guided meditation, um, two guided meditations and an audio, sorry, two audio guided meditations and a written workbook. That's what it fully explains. That helps you really build a practice of self-love and self-support. It will change your own inner guidance. It will change your own inner relationship. That'll be in the comments. Secondly, for the ladies, as always, I'll put a link in the comments. You reach out to me for a conversation. If your dating life is sucking and if your relationships aren't working or you want to get a better relationship, there's a, be a link in the comments for a chat with me as a gift complimentary conversation between you and me so we can help you get started on the path you want to follow and thirdly I mentioned my books I'll put that in the comments too because I recommend my book it's a good book seven times I said that just now okay so those three links will be in the comments for you to check out and um, get started with if you wish to and if you haven't seen my broadcast before this is my daily chat on Facebook live at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week now one caveat this weekend, I'm staffing my friend's women's workshop, women's weekend event. So I'm not sure, because I shoot, I shoot pictures for her. It's my, one of my past careers I still do. So I'll be, sh- I'll be there tomorrow, fr- Saturday and Sunday. Tomorrow's Friday. I hope I'll be able to do this at 5 p.m. every day, but I can't promise. So I'll, either, I'll be going sometime during the day so you can find me at different times. If I know the time I'm going, I'll, post a, uh, a, I'll put a post up saying, I'm going to go live at this time if it's different. Otherwise, I'll be going the usual time. So, but normally... So today and then Monday onwards, <laughs> for sure, I'll be doing I'll be 5 p.m. Pacific time. I will go every day, including over the weekend, so stay tuned for those. Um, so you can find my, my broadcast, if you haven't seen it before, on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. That is um, where you'll find me every day. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, although not all of them end up there, but I know it's where they're supposed to end up. So if you like my business page, which is Barry Selby, you can find all my replays up to a certain point, but Facebook seems to stop saving the older ones. However, I do have backups on my YouTube channel. So if you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can find the playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. All my replays are there um, from the first to the last. 
and in fact I just posted today some memories from two and a half years, two years ago, three years ago. I had a replay three years ago that um, from 2016 that was uh, a one of my first Facebook lives before I started doing the series. So this is actually pre number one. It was a vent. It was a rant. It was a I had to share it. So if you want to check that out, go find it on my page. It's, be, it's earlier than this one. So it's somewhere on my, on my page today. Excuse me, on my personal wall today. I think that's it. I appreciate you being with me. I hope it's made some sense. If you have any questions, thoughts, comments, or some contributions, please put them below or respond when I sign off. Um, let's be honest, shall we? I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Probably the same time. We'll see. And as always, take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.